Slice of Life, Episode 2. That's Billy Harner. I'm Keith Rad. Hopefully your quarantine is going as well as possible. We're here to brighten your day with Episode number 2 when we kick it off with our favorite social slice. Bill, what did you see and what do you want the people to know about? So we're halfway through week four of the uh, quarantine here in New York, somewhere around there. I'm, I'm not good at math. Every day sort of blends together at this point. It's, it's Groundhog Day without Ned Ryerson. Um, but here in the Harner household, they're starting to run out of ideas for ways to keep our kids entertained. So I was looking for some stuff to do and I came upon what is perhaps my favorite video I have ever seen in the history of humanity. Um, enter the Boardage family. Here's a little video and a taste of what they were doing. So, so this family is from Langford in British Columbia, and they had an activity jar for the entire family where they would pull out a sheet of paper and do whatever was on it. Could be play a board game, could be build a jigsaw puzzle. And it just happened to be on this day, they pulled out the activity of making a music video. And what followed put every family since the Partridges completely to shame. Amazing. People are like, oh, like I love my mom, she's so cool. And then this mom just comes in and like hair whips her way to number one. Full rain, rocking out like, like she's on the stage at the garden in front of a sold out crowd. Like I have never wanted to be anybody more in life than I want to be a member of the Bordage family. And then you see the kid drumming, right? And then in the background is like a white sheet. And I guess the rest of the family, like pretending to crawl through the shadows. Right. The, the video starts and the, the kid has, he's having nightmares and his dad telling him there's nothing in the closet. He's sitting there clinging onto a stuffed animal. I mean, it's shot for shot. Just perfect. <laughs> My social slice that I saw yesterday, um, this one will hit home with uh, pretty much all New Yorkers. And now uh, sweeping the country, uh, Governor Andrew Cuomo, who gives his daily press briefings at about 11 o'clock, um, he's captured the hearts of many, including uh, Randy Rainbow, who basically summed up his, uh, his view of the governor like this. So I saw this video yesterday, Bill, and then uh, I, it triggered me thinking about this New York Post article that I saw that was just nuts when the whole thing started and Governor Cuomo was on TV like every single day. Uh, the opening line was, he's the love gov, which is just amazing. And they, they were interviewing like as many women as they could about you know how they feel about, I guess, everyone's kind of in love with Andrew Cuomo at this point. Um, Susan Waldman. Susan Waldman, the Yankees radio broadcaster, was quoted in this article, quote, he's decisive, calming, gets things done, and he's drop dead gorgeous. I mean, everybody loves Cuomo right now. This is amazing. <laughs> yeah, he's him and, and I think Dr. Fauci are the two sort of rock stars that have come out of this whole thing. And um, he, he's everywhere. He's, his approval ratings are like milk and cookies level high. Like it's insane. And, uh, you know, it, I find myself uh, trying to watch as much as I can of what he's doing. And he does. He has like, you know, Randy Rainbow said it a little more creatively than I would, but uh, he has like a calming effect. You know, he's he knows what he's talking about. He's he's uh, just the way he presents himself and the way he, he puts the facts forward. It, it really makes you feel confident that, that you know, our, our governor here in New York knows what he's doing. Chicken Parm Heroes. Uh, we're recording this right around lunchtime. Perfect time for this. Um, this is where we're kind of going to get some some serious stuff, but stuff in a good way. Um, Billy, you saw some uh, respiratory therapist who, I guess, works in Detroit and then lives in Canada. What what what'd you find? Yeah, first of all, it gave me a geography lesson because I didn't think that that was possible where you could get from Detroit to Canada um, without you know a boat. I, I really made me question my my social studies and, and everything I learned growing up. Um, but so after I discovered that you could actually do this, Jeffrey Rowe is a respiratory therapist in the Henry Ford Hospital in, uh, in Detroit, and he lives in Canada. 
So after his shift, he was going back through the Windsor Crossing back into Ontario. And uh, when he got there, he got a bit of a surprise. Hey, my name's Jeff. I'm a respiratory therapist at uh, Henry Ford Hospital in Detroit. I live in Windsor. And uh, I've never done this before. I've never posted anything before. I'm not a Facebook person. But tonight, 20 customs officers standing shoulder to shoulder with signs welcoming back the Canadian healthcare workers that, that work in the States and they're shouting and cheering at us. And uh, it went right to my heart and I started crying. <laughs> and uh, I just wanna say to Canada Customs, thank you. That was the biggest pat on our backs that we could ever get. So these are the kind of things that we've seen a bunch of stories of recently where you know it's, it's people showing their support and, and appreciation for the first responders and the medical professionals that are out there on the front lines um keeping everybody safe and putting themselves at risk so um you see stories like this and it just gives you the goosebumps and it gives you all the feels and you know jeffrey's entire video he goes on to say that um you know they had a nurse in their their hospital that had passed away recently as a result of the coronavirus so it was a, it was a tough day and they've had some some tough weeks and uh, you never know what, you know, that smile or if you're going to let somebody go in front of you in, in line someplace or if you're going to buy lunch for somebody and have it delivered or something like that, how you could just change your day. And, and you know, we have our kids here making signs and putting them in the windows and um, all sorts of different stuff going on in different communities that are just to try to brighten people's days. And you never, never, never know a small thing that you can do that'll just make somebody's day like, like Jeffrey talked about. Yeah, it was pretty pretty great. Um, those are the people on the front lines. And then whoever else can help out, uh, like those in Brooklyn, uh, Bednark Studios, they've kind of come on recently. They've been, some steam has picked up. They just had 60 minutes pop in. Uh, Michael Bednark, who is in Brooklyn, uh, again, Bednark Studios, the company that makes like retail display studios. So like you go into Nike and you see cool looking uh, stuff when they have their stuff on display, they build that stuff. So obviously when this happened, they're not building anything. Uh, they had to like lay off 25% of their employees. And then all of a sudden they came up with this plan to now make gear for hospitals at the Brooklyn Navy Yard, basically. And they're making, and this is nuts, 27,000 face shields a day. That's insane. And, and apparently the New York Department of Health uh, is buying 500,000 of them. Um, and I, I reached out to him and was like, this is amazing. And it turns out not only does he love Brooklyn and love the Brooklyn Cyclones, but his parents own a baseball bat company called Barnstaple Bat. So everything comes back to baseball. It's big. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it really is. You know, there, there's some, when Marty Marcos was the borough president, he used to have something where he'd say where one in every three people is somehow connected back to Brooklyn in the world, which seems outrageous. But the more you talk to people and the more you, you meet people, it really seems that, it, you know, the world the world's huge, but it's pretty small when it comes down to it. Time for sports, um, and one of my my favorites. When I'm not broadcasting, I'm usually moonlighting as a uh, a men's ice hockey referee, getting screamed at by uh, people who are in the fifties and sixties. Uh, what you see from hockey, and getting screamed at by spectators like myself who just like to bust your chops from time to time. Uh, so, uh, the Syracuse Crunch. Uh, upstate New York. So again, a relatively local story. They're an American Hockey League AHL affiliate. Um, and Howard Dolgan, I'm, I may be butchering names. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm, this, is, this is what I do as a side gig. I'm not, I'm not great at all this stuff. But Howard is the, the owner of the team. And he received a call from one of the doctors, Dr. Robert Corona, up in the area uh, of Syracuse, and was asking him about equipment that the team uses um, that is manufactured uh, by a company called Santa Sport. You know, teams all over the, the country use these things. Um, it's a way to sanitize your equipment, particularly hockey equipment gets rather rancid from time to time. Um, so it's a way to, to clean their stuff. And then they also use different spraying machines to clean common areas, uh, showers, locker rooms, uh, weight rooms, things like that, to prevent disease from spreading. So uh, obviously their season's not going on right now. There's uncertainty about a lot of sports and when things are going to get back to, to business. So um, Dr. Corona had asked for some advice about this uh, equipment. And rather than uh, the Syracuse Crunch just saying, yeah, it's pretty good. You guys should get your own. They gave them everything they had, um, the, the equipment. They gave them the uh, chemicals needed to, to take care of everything. And um, 
I, it's the kind of stuff that you're, you're seeing all over the place and the kind of stuff that just brings a smile to your face knowing that, you know, they're not in this alone. So the equipment from the Syracuse Crunch got in some trucks and went to the Upstate University uh, Medical Hospital. So great job by the Crunch and uh, great job by everybody paying it forward. Yeah, really. I mean, whatever you, it's kind of like whatever you have lying around, you don't realize these things can come in, come in handy. Yeah. Uh, I saw something that was pretty wild because last night, Monday night was supposed to be the national championship game between um, <clears throat> the Dayton Flyers and potentially your Duke Blue Devils, potentially, potentially. Yeah. But yeah. Uh, of course, we didn't have our national championship. We didn't even have our tournament. Uh, and a lot of people thought, well, now we're not going to get one shining moment, which is the great musical tie-in to the end of the tournament with all the great memories. Um, but broadcaster Brandon Godden, uh, he didn't leave us hanging. Let's go! Let yourself look back on this day and say, I could have done more. The ball is tipped, and there you are. You're running for your life. You're a shoot. Uh, so, Billy, I watched this video from start to finish, obviously, because I couldn't look away. And everyone was like, wow, this is amazing how he edited it all together. But I, how did he have, like, every single shirt and a Maryland Terrapins mascot uniform. How big, he doesn't live in New York because that apartment would never hold all those. <laughs> no, no way, no way. Yeah, I mean, it was amazing. The fact that he, he lays out a full floor on on the ground with masking tape was outrageous. <laughs> How many takes it must have taken him to hit those buzzer beaters with those tiny basketballs? Because we've all tried to shoot those and it doesn't look like that ever. Um, so the, the shirts, everything. I mean, I have, I've, college basketball is, is my my number one like far and away from everything. You know, I grew up, uh, my dad and I went to the final four every year for about a decade straight. Um, some of my best memories in life are, are college basketball things. So I love this to the unteenth extent. I tried to get one shining moment to be my, my, uh, my wedding song. My wife didn't necessarily agree. She thought I was kidding. I wasn't. So if she sees this, she'll know. Um, but you know, like this, this is great. I mean, one shining moment and, uh, and just the NCAA tournament, I think is the, the best event in all sports. So uh, I'm all for it. Uh, well, hopefully we can put a smile on your face today for episode two. And uh, I think a lot of these stories are inspirational to everybody, but also to potentially um, the Horner family who may shoot a Enter Sandman video by the time this week is up. You gotta grow the hair out a little bit more though. I saw it this morning and I tried to recreate the InSync bye 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 video, but my two year old couldn't really put the, uh, the motions down. <laughs> All right, Bill. See you tomorrow. All right. Take care. See you tomorrow.